What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at No More Parties. You can also find me on TikTok at No More Parties. And we're back today with another Thursday Night Football uh, prize picks 5x5 five five flex play on these uh, player prop bets. Last week, we went 4-1. and one. We were one Kyler Murray rushing yard, one Kyler Murray kneel down from going 5x5 five five for the third time this season. We're trying to do it this week. Let's get into it. The first line I like this evening is Gus Edwards, 48 and a half rushing yards. I like the over. Gus Edwards had his season debut last week after coming back from an ACL tear that he suffered like a year ago, and he rushed for 66 yards on 36% of the snaps. He's been on the injury report this week. Um, I believe he had Monday off of practice, but he's currently listed as questionable. This is, I'm recording this on Wednesday, and so I'm assuming later today, meaning Wednesday, we'll receive a little bit more clarity, but as of now, it's kind of looking like he'll probably play, and if he plays, he's clearly the best running back on the team at this point. 49 rushing yards, I think he can get there. Tampa Bay is 13th in rushing yards against them, so kind of middle of the road, upper half of the league. And six individual running backs have hit this line against Tampa Bay. Sometimes that ha that's happening like two guys in the same game, but seven games played, six running backs have hit this line. I like Gus Edwards to go for at least 49 rushing yards if he plays on Thursday night. The next line I like is Leonard Fournette, and his line is 51 and a half rushing yards. I like the under. He's averaging 51.7 this season, so like right at this line. He's actually hit it in four out of his seven games, but in only two of his last five. And during that stretch, he's averaging 34 rushing yards per game and 2.93 yards per carry. Like not even, not even three yards per carry. And his starting left guard is going to be out this week, Luke I think his name is Luke Goddicky. I don't know how to say it, but his starting left guard is out. He's already been super inefficient and not productive the last few weeks. And Baltimore is in the bottom third of the league in rushing yards allowed to running back. So relatively stout rushing defense. Leonard Fournette's been terrible lately. Starting offensive linemen are out. It just doesn't seem like a good combination for him to be very productive this week. 51 and a half rushing yards is not a crazy line, but I like him to, to go under that against Baltimore. The other running back in Tampa Bay, however, is Rashad White, who has a receiving yards line of 12.5. I like him to go over that. He's averaging 14.9 this season, but since earning a larger role in this offense in week four, he's averaging 24.3 receiving yards and 3.8 targets per game. And Baltimore is giving up the seventh most receiving yards to running backs across the entire league. So checkdowns are available here. Rashad Way has already earned the trust of Tom Brady, of this coaching staff to earn playing time and opportunities in the passing game. He's a good checkdown option. He's a fairly versatile receiver, and he's been relatively productive in recent weeks. I like him to get at least 13 receiving yards, not a very high bar. The next line I like is Lamar Jackson's combined passing and rushing yards prop, which is at 270.5 yards. I like the over. He's averaging 272.4 in that category this season, and... I kind of like both his his individual passing yards and his individual rushing yards lines. His passing yards line is 205.5, uh, rushing yards is 60.5. I kind of like both of those. And if you combine them, there's like another five yards he has to find somewhere in order to hit this combined line. I like both of those and I don't want to pick whether I think it's going to be a rushing week or a passing week. The combined is the move, I think, because he could do it in either way. The Buccaneers are going to be down Carlton Davis, their number one corner. They're going to be down Antoine Winfield Jr., starting safety. Uh, Sean Murphy Bunting is also on the injury report. So they're down a lot of dudes in their secondary, a lot of their best players in the secondary. So I think Lamar Jackson will be able to throw against the Buccaneers on Thursday night, but he also hasn't gone for fewer than 58 rushing yards since week one. Obviously, we know he can go off in the running game at any time. This looks like it's going, you know, kind of set up to be a successful passing day for him. And so however he gets to 271 passing plus rushing yards, I like him to do that on Thursday night. And then the last line here for the flex play is Mike Evans, 67 and a half receiving yards. I like the over. He's averaging 75.7 receiving yards this season. He's actually hit this over in four out of the six games he's played. And I know he's on the injury report this week. He picked up a DNP at practice on Monday. He was a limited participant on Tuesday. I'm recording this on Wednesday, and so we don't have clarity on his participation as of me recording this, but it looks like he's 
trending towards playing this week, being healthy. And if he plays, I, I like him to hit this line. No Cameron Brait for the Buccaneers, no Russell Gage, maybe no Julio Jones. And since missing a week three game against Green Bay, Mike Evans is averaging 9.3 targets per game, 68 air yards per game compared to Chris Godwin, who's averaging 10.3 targets. So a little bit more target opportunity, but his air yards opportunity, 39.5 air yards per game for Godwin. Mike Evans has to catch a, you know, a couple chunk plays and he's most of the way towards this line. And it seems like most people are on Godwin this week rather than Evans. I'm not sure if that's just the questionable tag or, or what, but Godwin's receiving yards line this week is actually higher than Mike Evans. He's got to hit 70.5. Mike Evans just has to hit 67.5. Obviously, if Mike Evans doesn't play, Godwin's line is is beautiful. It would probably go up if Mike Evans gets uh, ruled out. But that would be my pivot if Mike Evans doesn't end up playing, is to go to that Godwin line. But... Other than the Godwin line, the honorable mention I like this week is Tom Brady, 280.5 passing yards. I like the under. He's averaging 277.4 passing yards per game this season, so not quite at this line. He's hit the over in just three out of his seven games. Baltimore is allowing 280 passing yards per game, so right at this line, but nobody they've played has hit this over in their last four games, which includes some shitty quarterbacks. But the first two games of that four-game stretch was a, a game against Buffalo in which Josh Allen had only 213 passing yards, and then a game against Cincinnati in which Joe Burrow had only 217 passing yards. And overall, quarterbacks are averaging just 215 yards against them in their last four games. So they're they're playing well recently. Tom Brady and the Buccaneers are not playing very well. They've been fairly dysfunctional this season. I like Tom Brady to go under 280 passing yards this week. So there it is. That's the uh, the 5x5 five five, Gus Edwards rushing yards, Leonard Fournette rushing yards, Rashad White receiving yards, Lamar Jackson passing plus rushing yards, Mike Evans receiving yards, a couple honorable mentions, Tom Brady and Chris Godwin. Yeah, let's, uh, let's 10x our money. Catch you next week. Peace. Okay.